Hi guys. Right, we are joined by Philip and Amy from Asmodi um, uh, to get a, a catch up with those guys and, and everything that's going on. Welcome onto the show, folks. Hello. <laughs> right. So, um, what have you guys got? Oh, going on? <laughs> what have you got going on here at Virtual Expo this weekend? Oh, we have got all sorts going on. Um, one of the things that we are really happy that we're going to be able to bring along uh, is live demonstrations. Because um, any, anyone who's sort of seen us at the kind of physical show knows that we, we just love playing games with everyone. Uh, Big bring, demo areas. Mm -hmm. We bring as many people as we can along to sort of show games, show some new games off, show some of our classics, and uh, yeah, sort of teach people how to play. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so, um, what kind of demos and things can people uh, sign up to? Well, we have a huge selection. Um, so, if you like minis, we have X-Wing and Atomic Mass. We have um, Crisis, Marvel Crisis Protocol. If you prefer something more family-oriented, we've got Concept, Just One, on our Asmodee stand and our Discovery stand. We've got a bunch of new releases, if you like Marvel Splendor and um, Marvel Infinity Gauntlet, which is the new Love Letter one, and Days of Wonder, Small World of Warcraft. So we have a huge selection across our stands. Wow. I, I hear Marvel Splendor. Splendor is one of those games where I don't know what it is, the mathematics and the, the, the way you actually tactically play the game always fries my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Um... Right, so we, uh, uh, I'm just showing folk the, the, the virtual stand there for Asmodi, and uh, it breaks down into other stands as well. So um, uh, there's the Fantasy Flight Games stand, Days of Wonder, Z-Man, Atomic Mass, Coil Spring. So if you're interested in the different um, uh, uh, demonstrations and things that they're doing, be sure to head over to the, the, the Virtual Expo site and check it out. And also, you can join uh, the Asmodi Discord um, mm. as well. So, um, guys, um, I believe one of you can do a screen share with us to, to show us around um, uh, a little bit of what, uh, what people can expect. Yeah, uh, so I'll screen share. Ooh, we have technical gremlins. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. believe we're hearing Philip right now. So, mm -hmm. um, um, Amy, I don't know if you can hear Philip, can you? I can hear Phil. He's very um, quiet. He's just telling us all that um, he's going to pop over to the Discord server uh -huh. and he can screen share. So he's going to show everybody how easy it is oh, to yes. join one of our games okay. and maybe just show you guys like how um, how we've set up the demonstrations mm -hmm. because yeah. we wanted it to be interactive and mm -hmm. we wanted it to be like that you can actually play the games rather than just watch a video. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully... Right, well, if he's, to if he, if he is share and show you. Yeah. So, uh, Philip, if you can do me one yeah. favor, buddy, just very quick. Oh, are you back? Can you hear me now? Yes, I we can, can hear you, you now. Die. Yes. Okay, sorry about that. It's one of those classic things. It works in the tech test, and we go live, and yeah. bam. <laughs> right, I'm going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, where are we? Green button at the bottom. Yeah. Lots of windows open. There we go. Here it comes. Can you see that? And yes. It's loading. There yeah. we go. So uh, this is this is the sort of welcome page that we've got for the uh, for the FFG Discord server here. It's got a nice little explanation of what everything is doing. But we've got plenty of channels. If people don't want to sort of join in on voice chat or anything, and they just want to you know talk FFG games, they can do that in the text chat. We've got some uh, sort of areas for people to find local gaming groups as well, which uh, we're really keen for people to use. Uh, but then down here in the voice channels. We've literally got let's play different games. So we're going to click in and we're going to go for let's play Star Wars X-Wing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see a live feed of uh, one of our demonstrators ready to teach people X-Wing. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to hear him because he's not on this call, but you'll see sort of how it works. Yeah. So here we go. Watch stream. Uh, in begin. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it's as simple as that. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the things that we were really keen for as well uh, was that you know if you're if you're if you're watching a video uh, sort of demonstration then I couldn't say for example oh I really like the look of the Millennium Falcon can you hold that up closer to the camera so that I can see the detail on the mini for example yeah there you go you see so, um, but literally like we 
we just want people to play games. So if, for example, I was to want the Millennium Falcon to take a sharp left turn right now to avoid that that debris there, mm-hmm. and our demonstrator is moving all the pieces for you. Um, <laughs> but then we've also got a, uh, a fleet of TIE fighters giving chase. So uh, I think maybe we should move one of those TIE fighters in range of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There we go. And I think he should he should definitely take a shot at the uh, at the side of the Millennium Falcon there. So yeah, of course. Ah, oh, I've, uh-huh. I've just been told that that's Han Solo, so he always shoots first. So Han oh, Solo, of course. Shot yes. Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So we're going to get so we're going to get to see we're going to take some range. Take a blast here. Yeah. yeah. Or is it Luke? Because he's probably firing oh. from the lower turret. Oh, oh that, is, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> and then it looks like we might have some hits there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to roll an evade. Mm-hmm. Several evades. Mm-hmm. No damage on the uh, on the TIE fighter, it looks like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that is, as, that is as simple as it is for people to get involved in demos. And we've got that similar sort of setup for multiple different games throughout the weekend as well. So, um, uh, so anybody that's interested can just hop into uh, the Fantasy Flight Games Discord. Yep. Um, and then uh, hook in and, and th- then basically just connect them um, directly with the, uh, is it, um, who, what do you call the chap there? Uh, so, so this is, this is my good friend Rev, uh, or, or Christian, uh-huh. as we also call him. All right. Uh, cool. so, yeah. uh, so they can hop in with Rev and, uh, he'll take them, take them through a game. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Literally as easy as that. And, um, you know, we've, we've got plenty of other games on here as well. Like there's several rooms for, for things as well. So mm-hmm. if the game that you want isn't available, you know, you can hop into the text chat and sort of uh, hop into the text chat and, and kind of uh, say hello and, and get involved in the discussions that we're having there while you wait. We're sort of capping demos at about 45 minutes so that, um, you yeah. know, if we do have, if for example, we have uh, a, a High demand game like Small World of Warcraft or, or Marvel mm-hmm. Spender, then we can make sure that um, you know everyone can have a fair chance at getting a go on that and yeah. mm-hmm. sort of see yeah. see what's uh, what's new and exciting. Yeah, I have to say, Small World of Warcraft is one that I'm quite excited about. Seeing the the Small World game engine be reskinned to World of Warcraft, I think is going to be a lot of fun on the tabletop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they've put a lot of effort into into this sort of conversion as well. It's um, I think there's some it's true labour of love that one. So mm-hmm. yeah. I think it was um, the game that got its first demo today, nine o'clock on the dot. I think we had a full table. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Right, so it's right. just made, it's just just made its first starting into, today. Um, I can see people jumping in to play with Rev actually, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop out uh, yeah. and stop sharing my screen here. Uh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, so um, uh, 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 you guys also have Q and A's and competitions and uh, and interviews taking place over the weekend as well. Yes, correct. Uh, so I think we've got our, our first sort of Q and A session is this evening at about ten o'clock, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got a couple of uh, very very prestigious guests over from the uh, the US joining us, mm-hmm. um, and that is uh, Matt Leacock and uh, Rob Gabio. Uh, are going to be there to answer questions about um, uh, about the upcoming pandemic uh, legacy season nice. zero. Mm. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Very exciting. We, we we have caught up with Matt a few times at the show. I think there was one mm-hmm. year we asked him what his favorite ice cream was. Oh, oh that's a useful <laughs> question. <laughs> oh, I find it funny at the time. It was great. <laughs> what um, was it? Out of curiosity. Oh, I was going to ask the same. <laughs> um, I, for, I forget. You'll have to ask him again oh, in the seminar. Here we go. It's one for later on. Ten o'clock. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, so, in terms of product showcases, um, uh, 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 have you guys got any stuff to show us? Uh, we've got a few bits and pieces. Yeah, I think um, I, I think I'll, I'll let Amy talk a bit more about this one. But I think one of the things that was a real challenge for us was actually convert some of the games that we would take to every single physical show that we would do. Yeah, mm. trying to convert them for the digital format was was near to impossible. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'll let Amy go into that a bit more because she did a lot of the work on it. <laughs> Yeah, so I put the games list together. I just went through um, what we would normally take to Expo and um, try to find the games that would tweak quite easily over to virtual, um, over to virtual setting. Obviously, that kind of took out a lot of the card drafting games, which is a bit of a shame because we really wanted to um, talk about Seven Wonders. Um, second edition coming out, um, and also took out a lot of the. Um, 
a card games like Keyforge is quite a big one for us that we take to Expo. Yeah. Um, so we have got our Mass Mutation decks here uh-huh. um, that we nice. just kind of wanted. We wanted to show you guys um, what the new set looks like, um, yeah. even though we can't realistically do a full demo. We still wanted to show you, and obviously, it wouldn't be uh, UK. Games Expo without... Double. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Double. <laughs> yeah. So it's another one where um, it doesn't really translate too well, but um, it, it's here. It's at Expo. And... Mm-hmm. We have it with our double hands. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that we... is something I see a lot of folks do every year. They just go hunting for double hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a top quality foam collectible. That one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, uh, can is there stuff you can show us on the Keyforge front? There is. Yeah. Um, so we haven't actually opened our decks yet. Mm-hmm. So ah. we're hoping um, to show you what we've got. Oh, yeah. Phil, he's racing yeah. ahead. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> So this is the um, next step, uh, the next um, set that's just come out, mm-hmm. and they have uh, a couple of different mechanics that they use. So there are the, the, the mutation cards where you have to have both of them in order to play yeah. the, car- the cards. So there's two that will fit in. They have like the artwork on one and then the power on the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they also have the enhanced as well, where it will tell you which cards in the deck have been enhanced. And so, you know, if for those of you who played, when you play a card, you have the little ember symbol in the corner, and it means mm-hmm. that you get an ember when you play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, now there are cards that will let you capture or damage as you play it instead. Um, so that's just that, another added mechanic that we've got. And I've got the new, one of the new ones. I don't know if you can see it because I've not mm-hmm. taken the shiny wrapper off yet. That's all right. What's, what's your deck name? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's the most I've important question when one. you open a Keyforge deck. What is the deck name? <laughs> Bo, Boss, Skeledan, Zana. Oh, that's that's a bit of a mouthful. I have, a mouthful. Um, I have the medium countess. Uh, not the rare countess, not the well done countess, <laughs> the medium countess. Uh, <laughs> like the lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you like your countess done? I prefer rare. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Um, but no, as always with Keyforge, I think... Um, Super excited to see what how the new mechanics uh, in each set sort of kind of change up the tactics that were already out there. Yeah. Um, so early earlier this year, we were actually sort of right before lockdown started. Actually, mm. we ran the uh, kind of Keyforge Grand Championship for the UK, mm-hmm. and it was really interesting seeing the kind of mixture of decks from different sets that sort of participated. Um, and, and of course, a lot of the time, people were worried about power creep in card games, but actually, the the sort of the, the final cut for the uh, for the the tournament still had a lot of earlier decks in there as well. So yeah. it wasn't like the latest set is the only one you can play with if you want to win. It was, yeah. it was a mm. sort of really interesting mix. Yeah. So that was well, cool that, that's the beauty of Keyforge's design is you're completely taking away that deck building as, aspect and every deck you buy is individualized. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, and I mean, like, I just, I love that concept because it's something I used to hate with collectible card games was you would get the one guy who knew every single card and every mm. single combo. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just like, how did I play against that person? You know, I mean, like people call me yeah. Captain Alpha Strike. That's that's like Admiral Alpha Strike right there. No, 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 no. You, you are Captain Alpha. All right, Strike. I, I, I'm <laughs> keeping my rank. I'm saying they're higher rank than me. Um, so, uh, w- w- what's next, guys? Obviously, we, we're we're in. Um, we're in very strange times, you know. It's um, it, it, w- w- one of the one of the key things for. That that is an industry we rely on as Modi for is a lot of the organised play uh, and stuff that, that that we're all kind of having to do without uh, at the moment. So, while I understand that everything is uncertain at the moment, do you have uh, any ideas of your your plans uh, going forward what, uh, for the future of what's uh, what's coming up? I think the um, the sort the sort of guiding principle we're going with is. Like it, we we would love for events and organised play to happen again as soon as it is safe to do so, and yeah. that that's that's always going to be sort of the the kind of crux of it is uh, until we can sort of do it in a way that we know isn't going to put people at risk. Uh, that's that's sort of what we have to kind mm-hmm. of stick by with it. Um, we are we, you know we are starting to kind of look at ways that we can we can kind of adjust it though, for example, and I think 
this weekend has been a great example of how we can adjust our event offering into a kind of different medium to what we're used to. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, it's it's sort of a watch this space at the minute. Uh, like, you know, it could could be that we look at sort of you know the the safety side of 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 a card game setup, for example. You know, mm-hmm. I, like two people sat opposite each other at a very small table, kind of um, breathing the same air and, and facing one another and talking and yeah. essentially touching the same game components. Mm. That's quite a limiting factor, particularly mm. if they're going to be sat there for an hour or two. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking at whether we can sort of help, you know, venues and stores and things like that with adjustments and, and you know, whether that's plastic screens to put between players, sort of bank teller style or, or what it yeah. might be. There's, there's a lot of discussion happening about it, but um, we're very much sort of, I think up, up until very recently, it's been very clear that it's not a possibility. But now we're at a stage where we're starting to hear from a lot more of the kind of the store venues that run so much of the ground level organized play mm-hmm. um, and who we, we can do it without instantly as well. So shout out yeah. to those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're hearing more from them in terms of saying that, OK, we've we've managed to open up in a small way for this, for the sort of more casual level kind of more kind of friendly tournaments they're finding ways around that so yeah. one of the one of the really important things that uh, some of our team are working on at the minute actually is is kind of collating the best practices for this kind of new world of organized play so that we can sort of help other stores to potentially do that mm-hmm. when they're ready and that's the key caveat there is is, is when they're ready as well like when they're ready and they are capable of doing it in a safe way that's when we want to support we're not interested in sort of pressuring anyone into opening up and running a 50 man tournament just yeah just because we want people to buy more keyforge or something like that because ultimately that's that's not good for anyone so. yeah and what about um uh, are you guys prepping for essen yes so uh essen i think is looking like that's going to be the that's going to be the next project um for, for some of my uh, colleagues over the over the over the sea yeah um, so that's going to be uh it's gonna be the next one but um I think one of the things as well that's been really nice about sort of the silver lining of, of this year of cancelled events is the fact that kind of all the events teams across Asmodee, as a, because Asmodee is a huge entity, um, they've all sort of really come together nicely. Uh, and there's been so many, uh, so many sort of conversations and sharing ideas and sort of we were having chats with them before, uh, with the team in the States before Gen Con. Yeah. Uh, I've already sort of shared a number of ideas and, and concepts uh, that we've, we've implemented this weekend with the team in Germany as well to hopefully mm-hmm. sort of look at a similar kind of presence in, in Essen. So again, watch this space because I'm sure we'll, we'll be doing something something uh, exciting over there for Essen. Fantastic. Yeah, it's been great kind of talking to our counterparts um, sort of in the other teams that we ordinarily probably wouldn't speak to. So mm-hmm. it's nice that we've all kind of come together. We've shared our ideas on how we can make these virtual events happen. We've learned from Gen Con. We're hoping then that we can help Essen. Um, and yeah, just we have all kind of one big team trying to make gaming happen whilst we're <laughs> all at home. So. <laughs> fantastic fantastic mm-hmm. well look guys uh, thank you so much for joining us i believe we might be getting a, 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 another chat with uh, either you folk or someone else from asmodi um uh, tomorrow so uh, we're looking forward to that um but yes um guys if you want to uh, check it out go and check out the asmodi stand mm-hmm. um and in, in the main expo hall and yes you can they've uh, dozens and dozens of events and things that you can get involved in. Uh, Philip, Amy, thank you very much. 